On today's show, BMW confirms we'll see the Mini E as a concept car next month, McLaren works on an electric hypercar, and we figure out just how far you can travel on a single charge in a DIY EV. These stories and more coming up next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 49% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, a professional musician turned electric vehicle crusader, and I'm here to bring Kiwis a weekly roundup of the biggest news stories around the world in relation to cleaner, greener transport. As always, thanks for joining us. We've heard snippets about it all summer, and now we've received official confirmation that BMW will indeed be unveiling the 2020 Mini E electric car as a concept car at next month's Frankfurt Auto Show. Joining the Mini Cooper SE Countryman 4 all plug-in hybrid, the new model will be based on the three-door Mini Cooper and will become one of Mini's main hero models for the Mini brand. Of course, while this isn't the first time we've seen an all-electric Mini, it will be the first time you'll be able to buy one outright. So if you love the brand, stay tuned for more info in just over a month's time. With the new Nissan Leaf just around the corner, Nissan's premium brand, Infinity has taken advantage of Nissan EV tech to produce a beautiful one-off reimagining of a classic race car exclusively for this weekend's Pebble Beach Concours d'Elegance. Called the Concept 9, the 40s-inspired racer features a 120 kilowatt electric motor and a 30 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is good for about 20 minutes on the racetrack. Yeah, it's not a great car spec-wise. In fact, I'd go as far as to say it's embarrassingly slow. But hey, it's a looker. And at Pebble Beach, that's all that really matters, right? When it comes to future car technology, Toyota has been rather vocal about its plans for hydrogen fuel cell cars, and more recently, a shift of attention towards electric vehicles. But when it comes to autonomous vehicle tech, it's kept pretty quiet, only showcasing the occasional prototype vehicle here or there. But this week, we heard that in addition to bringing semi-autonomous driver assistance features to its production cars from next year, the Japanese company is planning a stunning display of full autonomous vehicle tech at the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. While Toyota hasn't said exactly what that will entail, I'm guessing we'll see autonomous vehicles play a part in various opening ceremonies and perhaps also shuttle vehicles for athletes, dignitaries and other VIPs. Will it be all tapped given Tesla and Nissan's plans for autonomy right now, or will it blow us away? Well, I guess we'll have to wait and find out. Its name is synonymous with high-performance race cars and high-end six-digit sports cars with roaring engines. But this week, UK magazine Autocar broke the news that British car company McLaren is allegedly working on an all-electric Ultimate Series hypercar that will perform as well as its 675 LT. There's no date as to when this will reach the market, although Autocar suggests we'll see it sometime after the launch of the three-seat BP23 in 2018. Given McLaren is trying to make half of its cars hybrid by 2022, I think we should expect the electric model sometime in the next two or three years. And I, for one, can't wait to see what it's like. Just one week after Intel announced its intent to bring some 100 level four autonomous vehicles onto the roads as part of a global autonomous vehicle test fleet, the hardware manufacturer has announced that Fiat Chrysler has just signed a memorandum of understanding to join BMW and Intel's recently acquired autonomous vehicle arm, Mobileye, in a number of different autonomous vehicle programs. What is perhaps interesting about this is the fact that Fiat Chrysler has previously worked with Alphabet's Waymo on autonomous vehicles. And while it's not clear if this partnership is ongoing, it shows that FCA is keen to catch up to the autonomous vehicle development being carried out by the rest of the auto industry. As any company executive will tell you, it's tough to keep your company's core values intact as the company gets bigger, especially when that expansion happens so quickly as it's done with Tesla. But while Tesla has changed a lot since those first eager Roadster owners slapped down cash for a car and took Tesla's changing the price on the chin, more recent customers aren't always finding it easy to talk to someone who can help them with any problems they may have with their car or their service. Which is why, following a recent lawsuit filed against it, Tesla has announced it's streamlining its complaint and feedback process so that owners who are getting less than stellar help 
or who just want to say well done, can talk to an executive a lot sooner. It's not clear if you'll be able to reach out to Elon Musk in this way, although I suspect it will be, so I'm very keen to see if this streamlining will improve customer experiences or not. With its promise to bring a whole new slew of plug-in models to market in the not-too-distant future, still being treated very cautiously in the plug-in world, given its past experience, I think it's fair to agree that Volkswagen needs to seriously change gears if it doesn't want people to laugh hysterically every single time it reiterates its goal to become a global leader in electrified vehicles. But this week, Autoblog Green ran a story suggesting that the Volkswagen ID, Volkswagen's first in a new line of long-range, fast-charging electric cars, may not even go on sale globally, with the US and other markets not getting it at all. Instead, they'll have to wait for the ID cross a year or so later, and perhaps, or maybe not, the ID buzz after that. It's a very disappointing piece of news that suggests that Volkswagen is still struggling to accept electric vehicles, but I guess at the end of the day, you reap what you sow. And finally, in the world of electric cars, there's no production car that can go further than the Tesla Model S 100D, which, as I'm sure you'll remember from a few weeks back, has now been proven to travel more than 1,000 kilometers, 621 miles, when driven very, very carefully. Well, some of you nudged me in the comments to mention the converted BMW known as the Phoenix, which earlier this year managed to drive 748 miles, that's 1,203 kilometers, on a single charge in real world driving. Now, apparently, the team behind the Phoenix want to do the trip again, but this time they want to stick to the constant speed that Tesla uses when it quotes optimal range to see just how far the Phoenix will go. And if you're interested in seeing how the last trip turned out, the excellent Yuhu Garcia has a feature on his YouTube channel, so go check it out when we're done here, which, as it happens, is in about 40 seconds. But before I go, I just want to remind you one more time about EV World NZ, an electric car industry conference and public show taking place at the Vodafone Events Center in Auckland on September 8th and 9th. With the industry conference set for Friday the 8th and the public expo set for Saturday the 9th, right at the start of International Drive Electric Week, you really won't want to miss it. Best of all, the public expo on Saturday is completely free, so be sure to follow the link below to find out more. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, tell your friends about the show, and if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness, so make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, enjoy your weekend, make sure you do something fun, and don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.